So I'm going to start this video by reading a comment and just because I'm reading the comment doesn't mean that I agree with everything or that I know everything is factual and true. I'm just reading it because this is a video request through this comment. I mean, they didn't, I don't think they said, can you make a video about him? But they wrote enough stuff here that made me interested in making a video about this person. I already made a video about him before. High Carb Regenerator, whatever his name is, I don't know. Okay, the storyteller prior names over the last three years high carb regenerator health causes regeneration beaded tree hugger i missed that one potato powered cyclist ryan talks i did see that one and ryan halty i did see that one too the other ones i mean he must have had those only for a few days or something because i didn't see those but anyway now says he has diabetes from eating all that sugar vegan since 2011 and they linked a video which i'm gonna go and look at you already made uh, some videos about him he really He's really been going downhill recently in his on his vegan diet. A few weeks ago, he said he accidentally ate meat, whatever that means. He also finally admitted to having an eating disorder. He's also now constantly changing his channel name, showing signs of an identity crisis. Uh, hopefully, th hopefully these are the final days of his veganism, and he'll go back to a normal diet soon. Okay, so uh, I don't know if it was this person or somebody else, but somebody else a few days ago sent me a video where he was talking about his eating disorder, <clears throat> and I was going to reply to it, but I didn't. <clears throat> excuse me so in the video it was kind of um not the the best thing to watch like it wasn't a happy video but i mean he didn't seem like he was in a bad mood or anything but just some of the things he was saying was it was kind of sad to me like where he was saying that he felt shame around eating in front of people and was under eating before eating one meal a day and then it, it just sounded like complete torture and then he um in summary, at the end, he was saying something like he's he sounded like he was fed up and it sounded like he was ready to start something. And what he was starting was something that I think he probably already done started a million times before, which was the all sugar during rider diet. So he said, I mean, I don't know if he was joking. I don't know if I misheard him, but he said he was going to go get juice and just not have any fat and just just do the, the sugar diet again or something like that. And I, I, as soon as I heard that, I think I cut the video off and I forgot to make a response because it's just it's sad. It's sad. It's so sad. You know, when you're listening to Dorian Ryder and it's not working, but you still keep wanting to listen to Dorian Ryder. When Dorian Ryder, look, I think different people's bodies have different metabolisms and different body types and different things work for different people. Dorian Ryder has never amassed and had to lose significant amounts of body fat. Dorian Ryder has always been skinny. <clears throat> Dorian Ryder takes steroids to put mass on his body. Dorian Ryder, you know, I, when I was making a video on um, the vegans of Instagram on my other channel, I actually started to think and ponder based on some of the things that Dorian Ryder does. If at some point he was made to feel like less than because he wasn't some big, huge, muscular dude, and then that turned into him twisting, the, you know, the super emaciated skinny look and trying to make that the standard, <clears throat> and, you know, for others, when he naturally just has that body type. Like, he's always been skinny. He's never shown any, any body fat on his body, ever. So... Maybe that's why he came on YouTube and he was trying to push that as the standard because he has that effortlessly and he can try to make it seem so great when he can look around and see, well, there's a lot of people with a lot of fat that can't get as skinny as me, even though he was never going to be a big muscle dude, even if he started taking all them steroids, it's not going to turn him into a muscle dude because he just doesn't have that body type, you know? So anyway, he's going to go back to listening to Dorian Ryder who knows nothing about his type of situation specifically which is where this man wants to lose weight. And in the video, the last video I saw, which is not the one that I'm going to click on right now and watch, he said that he can't grab the fat on his body and he was grabbing around like on his chest and, and stuff like that. And it looked like there was no fat, like not really not on the surface of his body. It seemed like it was probably just predominantly visceral fat on his body, which is very, very, very unhealthy. Um, it's even more unhealthy than the fat that you can grab onto that's subcutaneous fat. So it seems like for his health sake, he needs to figure out something or help not figured out himself at this point. I think he probably needs to see a professional, maybe somebody that works with people with eating disorders. And I don't know, maybe some people, I, it costs money to do that, I guess. And maybe your insurance can help or maybe somebody can help. I don't know. But I think a lot of people, because of YouTube and stuff like that, and there's information online, maybe some people just feel like, no, I just need to find the correct person and tell me what to do online, giving some general broad information that's just guaranteed to work for me in my situation. When you probably need to go for therapy and treatment for your eating disorder and explain to somebody all the things you've been through with your eating disorder and see if they can, I don't know, work with a dietitian and somebody that's an actual professional and not a Dorian writer and that can help you and tailor things to your individual needs and not 
some YouTube talker trying to give you a diet. And you might say, oh, you you tell people to do. I don't tell people specifically what to eat and what diet to eat. And I would never do that because I think it's individual. And I think that some people um, that are professionals in the eating disorder realm, they might know how the past of eating certain ways can impact your metabolism and how to maybe fix that or at least begin to stop making it worse. So anyway, I'm going to click on the video that they left here. All right. So this is the video. He's standing on a bridge. It's called High Blood Sugar shocker my resting levels were off the charts i don't know what resting level is that like fasting i don't know <laughs> no no i don't know anything about this stuff y'all but i i never heard of resting blood sugar but i'm gonna assume he means like before you eat or something you all have been asking me to do this for the longest time the longest time i have put it off because i don't like needles now my fingers are hurting and i've got the result so this morning i got up and I decided I was gonna do this glucose test that everybody's asking me to do. And it came out 133. I don't know if that's good or not. It looked like- Okay, let me pause right there and say, he's saying that people have been asking him to do this and asking him to do this. Um, so I am wondering if he goes to a doctor at all because you, you should be getting that done right at the doctor if you go to the doctor every year. Hopefully he can, or hopefully he can maybe, hopefully in the future commit to doing that. You really should be going to the doctor. And I, was, I know there's vegans and stuff out here. They don't have blood tests that are recent. They got like five, six, seven year old blood tests that they want to push and say, oh, look how healthy I am because, you know, I'm still in the same diet. And this was my blood work years ago. You don't know what's going on with these people. They don't believe in going to the doctors. I believe in going to the doctors. Now, I'm not saying because there'll be people in the comments, oh, you just believe in pharmaceuticals and big pharma. Like, you don't necessarily have to take every prescription and do everything they advise you to do. But I think that going in and getting examinations and blood tests and Look, if they got to swab you or take your blood and send it to the lab and you get your results, I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, I just can't find anything wrong with that personally. I actually like getting that stuff done, okay? <laughs> I'll be checking my account online to see, you know, when the results come back because I want to know, you know? So he said he went and got his glucose done. Um, if you don't believe in going to doctors and stuff, I don't know what to tell you, but, but that I do, okay? No, let's see. Pre-diabetes. This glucose test that everybody's been asking me to do. Now my fingers are hurting, this finger in particular. And Okay, so he said it was 133. That's that's like high. That's high. This sounds like yeah, probably pre diabetes, especially if you haven't eaten anything and you are fasting. Yeah. I had a bunch of sugar. I had uh, four tablespoons of sugar and I had uh bicarbonate. I had the snake uh wait, wait, he had that like before he um what is resting glucose or resting levels? What does that mean, y'all? Somebody let me know because I don't know what that is. I assumed he meant fasting when he said resting, but he's saying he had all this sugar. So you had sugar like right before you did your glucose test? Snake juice, basically. What is it? Bicarbonate, uh, potassium, and sodium. I had a little bit of magnesium in it. And then I put another, I put half a liter of water in that and another half liter of apple cider in that. And I waited two hours and I tested my blood sugar again and it was 104. So make that make sense to me. Everybody's like, well, your blood sugar is going to go up if you have sugar and blah, blah. Okay, so does he mean he was fasting? It was 133 and then he ate the sugar and stuff and waited a few hours and it went down to 104. Hmm, that's quite a phenomenon. Blah, blah, blah. It's just not true at all. And, you know, actually, if I had not had uh, beans and stuff like that last night, I don't really think that... I don't really even think that it would have been 133 when I woke up today. And plus, I don't even know if I knew how to use it in the first stages. I had to watch instructional video because I'm retarded sometimes. And it's still, after I had this high-ass sugar meal, and I'm out here filming, everybody's like, well, you're going to fall asleep after you had that. But I'm not falling asleep. I am stepping in the hole, though. That sucked. This idea that having sugar is going to cause you to, you know, have your blood sugar spike. I, now, obviously, I didn't have any fat with that. Had I had fat with that, then, yeah, I would have run into some trouble. But I didn't. So that's the one thing that you really... Yeah, the stuff that's going on with him, it sounds a little strange. I think maybe he should get, like, one of those continuous monitors and keep track of what he's eating and then maybe take that to the doctor and see what they think i think that would probably be beneficial maybe you have to watch out for like if you are if your blood sugar is spiking you're either a having too much protein or b you're mix, mixing uh fat and sugar together you can have fat by itself you can have sugar by itself but you can't mix the two of them when you mix the two of them okay, so please he, you have it so drilled into your brain and i've you have the during rider stuff 
drilled into your brain. You have the freely stuff drilled into your brain. Okay. There's people online now testing their glucose. Okay. And testing with certain foods. They have continuous glucose monitors. It's not just words. Okay. Which is what freely and Writer have. Nutrition by Victoria have. They have just words. Oh, it's fine. You can eat all the sugar you want as long as you don't have any fat with it. There's people online. The first video I saw where somebody was demonstrating this. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it because whenever I, when I was vegan, I would have those data raids and stuff. I would just feel this high and crash and it was just felt, it felt so horrible. But then when I quit being a vegan and I was eating ice cream and stuff, it felt completely stable. So when I saw this video, this man, he said he had diabetes and he had, what else did he have? I think he just had diabetes, but he tested eating two bananas by themselves. His blood sugar went high. And then he had like a Snickers bar or something that had the equivalent amount of, of sugar as two bananas. But of course, you know, the Snickers bar got a lot of fat in it. His blood sugar didn't go as high. It was like, it was like 20 points lower, actually. It was like a significant amount lower. And I was like, see, I knew it. I knew it. And it wasn't just him. There's other people online. There's people on Instagram where their whole Instagram page is dedicated to them saying, you know, eating different foods. And this one man had a video of him eating bananas at different stages of ripeness. You'll never see the banana girl doing that. You'll never see these people doing that. The more ripened and blackened the bananas got, the higher his blood sugar went. Freely's over there talking about blending up 10 of them, blackened, alcoholic smelling bananas, and drinking down 10 of them. But she won't show her glucose. Okay. So, anyway, this whole thing where you can have the sugar or you can have fat, you need to get a continuous glucose monitor and, and try the testing yourself. Eat a Snickers bar and do it. No, don't do that. You need to see a doctor and make sure that it's okay for you to do these different things. But I'm just telling you what I've seen from multiple people, various people. Whenever they have fats with sugar, their blood sugar doesn't go as high. Now, I don't know about later on, you know, because some of them are showing their glucose like a couple hours later. I don't know what happens later on, you know. But as far as I've seen, you know, a lot of diabetics were, you know, they're saying that if they just eat a bunch of fruit and sugar and stuff or just drink a whole bunch of orange juice, their blood sugar is going to go crazy. Why can they eat a candy bar, though? And it still goes up, but it ain't going up as high as the fruit. I don't know. Now, I mean, I do kind of know. They say the fat, um, the vegans will focus on, oh, the fat blocks the sugar from going into the cell, right? They skip the whole process of the fat and the sugar being absorbed out of your intestines to even get in the bloodstream in the first place. They assume that once you put food into your mouth, it just immediately goes straight into your bloodstream. But apparently the fat is blocking or slowing down the sugar from even getting out of your intestines and into your bloodstream. So that's probably why it doesn't just spike. Because if you just eat the sugar by itself, it just can go in and you can just have all the sugar in your bloodstream. But if you have the sugar and the fat together, I don't know if this is the theory, but or if they, um, I'm pretty sure they probably have demonstrated this, but the fat is actually even slowing down the sugar from getting out of your intestines and into your bloodstream in the first place. And you can listen to Dorian Wright and all these people that say, oh, the fat lost the sugar. You, as soon as you eat the fat and the sugar, immediately in, your, immediately in your bloodstream. No, it's not. It has to go from your intestines into your bloodstream. And apparently, I guess the fat molecules is, is blocking that sugar from even getting into your bloodstream all at once in the first place. And I know this video is getting kind of long already, but yeah, I did see the comment. Somebody wrote, oh, you vegan deterrent is going to make a video about you. Yeah, if somebody asked me to. You know, I probably wasn't going to if somebody didn't ask me to because it was kind of depressing to watch the other video where he was talking about all these problems and stuff. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to start with juices and sugar. Like it just, it was just awful, you know? So yeah, let's keep watching. You have high blood blood sugar. Now I did have chickpeas last night when chickpeas are like 14. I forget I forget what it is, but it's it's, it's actually pretty high in uh, fat. So I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm just going to have like rice or something like that. And I'm going to test it tomorrow. And then maybe I'll make an update video to that. But I don't want to be, you know, doing updates about this. Okay, so I don't know what he means why he's just going to have rice. But, you know, in this community, the high carb community, they will just eat plain white rice and act like that's a meal. Like that is a spike in crash starvation meal but okay all the time it seems kind of ridiculous it's just as it's just the whole thing is so ridiculous at this point of people talking about stuff that isn't legitimately true what in the world are they doing over there yeah there are people out here talking about stuff that isn't legitimately true and you seem to be taking on the advice of a lot of them you need to get a continuous glucose monitor <sighs> it's just not true do it for yourself. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of pricking my finger. And it really, I mean, I put it on five. I put it on the... I don't know. He says do it for yourself. I've had a lot of, um, like, well, I haven't had a lot of glucose tests. But I've had blood tests because I go to doctors and stuff. And um, I had an A1C test. I had a, a two-hour glucose test where they give you a sugar drink. And they, they test your sugar, your fasting glucose. They give you a sugar drink. 
And you go back and they test it again. And everything was fine. Let me see if I can pull it up just to prove, you know, because <laughs> he's saying do it for yourself. And I'm not saying like I have some answer to how to have good blood sugar, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people, if they were to eat my diet, they probably get diabetes immediately because I don't eat a low carb or low sugar diet. And pretty much every time I eat sugar, it always pretty much has fat unless it's um, I make a tea or a drink that I put sugar into. Then that doesn't have any um, fat in it. But yeah. So I don't know. I'm Maybe use this information to let you know that this is just an opinion channel. I don't have any information about diabetes and how to fix your blood sugar. But, you know, just to show you, I have had my blood sugar tested. Okay, this is a comprehensive metabolic panel from August 27th. And it was not fasting. It wasn't a fasting glucose because I didn't have to fast for this. It was just because um, I was, look, I think I told you all about the, um, skin infection I have. Now I'm starting to think I had a skin infection y'all and I was like how the heck do I get a skin infection and I realized I was using a recall product that had bacteria in it. It's a cleaning product that had bacteria in it and I have been using that. Like could that have been the cause? I don't know. What is with all these recalls? But anyway so I had to get a blood test, a um, metabolic panel. They said my sodium was low. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's serious. You can, can't you get your sodium up pretty easily? Just eat something with salt and it was only one point low. Yeah a bunch of numbers but the glucose was fine. The last time I had my glucose tested before that, before um, August of this year, was in May of 2023. Look, I don't know if you're supposed to get it tested all that often. Okay, so this at least is one every year. It's more than for Freely got. Freely got a glucose test from like 2020 or <laughs> like four or five years ago. But yeah, so the fasting was uh, 88. So they gave me the sugar drink and it says 75 GM. So I think that means 75 grams maybe of sugar. So yeah, they test your glucose two hours after you um, drink the sugar drink and it was 112. So that's like a normal range or normal number. All right, so I just showed that to show you that, yeah, I do have some glucose tests, but it's not to show you that I have any authority or knowledge on like glucose because I don't I don't really pay attention to uh, sugar and, and glucose and stuff. I just get the test that the doctor said I gotta get. So, um, and I just eat whatever whatever I want, honestly. So I don't have any advice for him on how to lower his glucose and how to fix that. But I think that he needs to see a professional and stop listening to Duran Ryder. One thing I think for sure is true is that listening to these people and eating an all sugar diet and just eating rice is not going to be benefiting your whatever you got going on. Pre-diabetes, blood sugar swings, full on diabetes. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here, but whatever these people are telling you to do, I don't think that is going to help you. I figured if I was going to prick myself, I was going to go go full force for it. But I have noticed that since I've been doing this, uh, the snake juice or whatever. I don't know what the snake juice is. Uh, I think I heard of the snake diet guy. I saw like one or two videos of him a long time ago where he was just like, he seemed really angry. Like he was about to just give himself an aneurysm. And, and then later on, he was talking about fasting and fasting and fasting. And then I saw a video later on, he was talking about eating sugar. I think I saw that. The only reason I saw that was because Nutrition by Victoria was like, oh, so proud and happy that he was talking about eating carbs and sugar. I don't know who he's on now. I don't know anything about him. I really frankly don't care but yeah i guess he's listening to that man too like why are you listening to these people why this is not the only people in the world to listen to there's other people outside of youtube and the internets they're like medical professionals i don't know if he's going to them too but you get a second opinion or a third opinion from one of them it's been going better actually i went for a walk yesterday and my heart was actually pumping for the first like normally i can't raise my heart rate at all it drives me crazy and that what the heck does he get thyroid checks and everything like that? You need to get everything checked out. I mean, you get a full panel of everything. I know everybody brags about like... I don't know why I said thyroid, but it seems like when people have thyroid problems, their body can't do anything. Their body just can't do... It just doesn't react normally to normal uh, stresses and situations. It just can't do anything. Can't warm up, can't speed up. The heart rate can't do anything. The low heart rate, but like it's too low. Like I can, you know, back in the day when I could run before I had my ankle replaced, I could go for an entire run and it wouldn't raise my heart rate at all. You can have. Yeah, see, these depleted diets affect everybody differently. When I was a vegan, my heart rate, it wouldn't, it wouldn't slow down. Like it was going crazy fast. It was very, very scary because I kept going to the hospital for it because it was racing. And yeah, but he says that his was going really, really slow. Was, I think both are scary. I think you need to go to the doctor. I'm going to keep saying go to the doctor because I don't know. He hasn't mentioned that. He hasn't mentioned what his doctors have told him. So he's, it's not like he's pricking his own finger at home and everything. 
have sugar and not raise your, my sugar level went down after I had sugar. At a fasting level was 133. Actually, one of them that I took was 141, but I couldn't figure out how to use the damn thing. And one of them was 133, so we're going to go with that. Maybe I should put 141, because I think that's pre-diabetes. And then I have a bunch of sugar. Like, all I had was sugar today. And then after... Oh, if anybody out there is still watching, do you feel as sad as I do? I just feel sad. Like, all you had was a bunch of sugar. Like, Why? I know you got to be hungry. Eating a whole bunch of sugar will make you hungry. Low fat, low protein, just sugar. After that, I had an apple and a bunch of the, those gummies that I get from Trader Joe's. And my blood no, it sounds like the worst, the worst diet ever. The worst diet ever. Sugar goes down. Now I had. Yeah. So I wouldn't take that to mean like, oh, it was so good for me to eat sugar because it makes my blood sugar go down. I mean, I don't know if just eating the sugar is waking up your pancreas for a few minutes so that I can put out some insulin and then it lowers, lowers itself, lowers the glucose. But then when you're fasting, your uh, your pancreas is not being uh, stimulated. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this man. But if you're having these problems, like your blood glucose should not be going up that high when you're not eating, you know, and I wouldn't be like directly trying to link it to the food and saying, well, I ate the sugar and it went down. So, you know, it must not be that bad for me if I eat the sugar and it makes it go down. Your overall diet sounds horrible. Like, it's probably damaging your body, and that's why you got high blood glucose when you're uh, fasting. So, you need to throw the whole diet in the trash and start from scratch with a medical professional. Those after, you know, I took the test, but I guarantee if I took the test now, it'd probably be under 100. Yeah, that's why you need a continuous glucose monitor instead of sitting out here wondering. It may you need to go to a doctor. Well, if you go to the doctor, right, and you tell them that you had a fasting glucose of 130 or 141 or whatever... I would tell them the worst number so they can make sure they get you the, the best treatment, the best, most extreme, uh, not treatment, but examination. Will they send you home with a glucose monitor or something like that and tell you to check every so often to, you know, I don't know, because this sounds like weird stuff. And it seems like you need to go do to a doctor and see what they got to say. Instead of sitting here, it'll probably be 90. No, you don't know what the heck is going on. You could check and it could be 150. You don't know what the heck is going on. So, yeah you more insulin sensitive when you have just sugar now oh my goodness more insulin sensitive when you have more sugar what you shouldn't have to eat the sugar to get your blood sugar to go down your blood sugar shouldn't be spiking when you're fasting you know unless you got something wrong with you you know if you're diabetic and pre-diabetic then maybe maybe that's gonna happen to you i don't know what's been going on with me maybe i really need to simplify it maybe my body just does not like having a lot of things at one time. And I know I've talked about this before, made videos about this before. It's crazy to me. Like really, I mean, now I did the test. I've got, I'll take pictures, I'll put it up here. I didn't take myself doing it because I don't know. I really didn't know what I- Yeah, this means something is wrong. Now you might be focusing on the 104 and that's like in the normal range, you know, you eat the sugar and it's simple and insulin response and insulin sensitivity. No, something is wrong with your body. And it seems like this might be the intro to diabetes and you might start eating and they ain't going to go down as much as it's going down, you know, what I was doing. But now that I do, even when it's high like that, if you sleeping through the night and going hours with your blood sugar all the way up there for hours on end, like you don't know how long your blood sugar is up in the 130s or the 140s because you don't have a continuous, you don't have a continuous glucose monitor. I'm getting tired of talking y'all. This video is long. You don't have a continuous glucose monitor. So you don't know how long and how, how much your body is enduring. Um, those high sugar numbers and the damage that is doing to your body. So really, you don't know what's going on, you know, and having your blood sugar be high for hours and hours on end is damaging your body. Did you know that? I feel like an expert. Here's another myth that we've been told all along. Now, I know a lot of people on carnivore, when you're just eating straight protein, that will actually spike your blood sugar more than, than uh, sugar will. Because your body is turning into sugar because it can't have that much uh, protein. It just doesn't have much use for that much protein. You're watching me up there. It's actually a... I mean, I don't know. Some people are saying that when you do carnivore, in order to do it properly, you shouldn't just be eating a lot of protein. You should be eating a lot of fat on that diet, allegedly. I don't know anything about it. But yeah, a diet that's all just like lean cuts of meat doesn't seem to be an appropriate carnivore diet. Sweet place. Anyway, point of the story. Sugar does not raise your blood sugar level. It actually lowers it. Uh, so with hearing him say that, I'm starting to think that the situation is hopeless, you know, 
it's hopeless. There's a lot of people on the internet like this. I've seen this because I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I would make a lot of videos about help and stuff like that. When something happens to someone as an individual, they'll say you as if that's what's going to happen to your body, you know? So sugar doesn't raise your glucose, it lowers it. So if you wake up in the morning, your glucose, your fasting glucose is 88 and you eat and it goes up to 105. What? That's a normal function. You having your blood sugar in the 140 for hours and hours on end and finally you get some type of a pancreas reaction when you eat some sugar finally, you have something wrong with you. So you shouldn't be standing there saying, I know. <laughs> uh, all this attitude is going to give me a copyright show, y'all, I bet. But um, you shouldn't be standing out there saying, oh, if sugar doesn't raise your glucose, it lowers it. That doesn't make any sense. Your blood sugar should not get lower when you eat sugar. Okay? That's not ne a normal biological response. That's a, not a normal metabolis metabolism response. There's something wrong. There's something off. And there's something diseased about you. So why would you say that? Because that happened to you? Yeah, your blood sugar gets lower when you're having blood sugar problems when you have high blood sugar fasting because you got something wrong with you and your body and your system it did for me i'm gonna keep doing a few tests i'm not gonna make this a regular thing but i do know when i was no, watching you, that you need to make it a very regular thing because if you haven't eaten anything you've been fasting your blood sugar is 130 140 i would be at the doctor i would be demanding to give you <laughs> give me some type of a long term or whatever i got to do hour by hour monitoring and figure out what the heck is going on and what I got to do, because I'm not going to say, oh, I checked it once and I ate sugar and it went down. So I guess I just got to, you know, go about my life and just eat the sugar. Man, you want to start feeling weird. And when you start feeling weird, you want to check your glucose. It's going to be like 200. And you're going to eat and it's going to be like 210, 230. And then you're going to really have full on diabetes. You need to stop listening to these sugar monsters. Snake diet guy. He was talking about like once it gets below, like I got to figure out how to change the, how it measures it. Because I want to get that at an animal or whatever. Because it seems like a lot of people use that. I think you can change that on this uh, measuring thing that I got. So I'm going to change it to that because I want to get to that. Somebody let me know, Case, because I don't know anything about this. I'm just saying what I think as an unscientific, unprofessional person. That this high blood sugar and then it's going down when you eat. To me, this sounds like the early sign of it's going to hit a wall and you're going to you're going to have a, a catastrophe happen with your blood sugar. You're going to get full on diabetes soon. You're going to be injecting insulin soon and still listening to Dorian Ryder. Um, well, something popped up. You're still going to be listening to Dorian Rider while you're injecting insulin. So that means there's really no hope for you if you let Dorian Rider take you down to the path where you got to go to the pharmacy and you got to inject yourself and check your sugar. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to go and eat sugar. Will he let it get that far? I would say, yeah, it seems to be that seems to be what's going to happen. But I mean, Nutrition by Victoria practically over there doing that. You know, she said she had blood, she had high blood sugar at night. Or after eating her starch meal. And I don't know what's going on with her glucose now. She has not updated anything. I think there's so many people out here. And a lot of them aren't even diabetic. They're just health focused people. They're sticking that thing on their arm. And they're showing you their results on their phone. Of their blood sugar throughout the day. Why are none of these high sugar people. Eat sugar all day people. Why are none of them doing this? None of them. You got Freely over there making video after video after video. About how good sugar is for you. She won't even do it for one whole meal. To show you her glucose after she eats her 10 banana black and banana drink. And her orange juice with coconut sugar dumped in because her blood sugar is probably way higher than uh isn't it ryan is probably way higher than his probably hers probably go like 150 160 <laughs> and she can't she don't know that it's happening because she's uh you know she's been pre-diabetes and having blood sugar swings for a long time but yeah isn't it curious how none of them show their glucose you can find so many people with their glucose monitors online I didn't even know that was a thing when people stick the thing on their arm and then they can like look on their phone and see what's happening with their blood sugar throughout the day. And I guess they're putting in what they ate and when they ate it. None of these sugar people are doing that. Dorian Ryder's not doing that. Natasha's not doing that. Freely's not doing that. My Victoria's not doing that. Nobody's doing that. Why is that? Because the results are disastrous. And somehow I think a lot of people, maybe their body can put it with diabetes. I don't think diabetes is just like, you either have diabetes and you're on insulin and your blood sugar is going up to 400 sometimes or you're fine. I think people can, their body can endure a lot of weird stuff and a lot of high blood sugar damage before they get full on diabetes to the point where when you eat, you're going to die if you don't take insulin. I think that's a long road for some people's body to get to that point, you know, depending on how resistant their body is to, to getting full on diabetes. But, oh, this video is so long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, the vegans are going to be mad. 
They got a bee bag. Because I saw the comment saying, oh, let me scroll down and show you the comment. Watch out because vegan deterioration, aka the vegan stalker, might react to this video. Yeah, I got a lot to say, I guess. I got a lot to say here. That level, but he said anything under, I think, four or five on that is like you're in really good shape. But we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, this is this is this 30 days that I'm doing this. I really want to see how low I can get my blood sugar, how much. Okay, 30 days. I don't know exactly what he's doing for 30 days. I don't think he's been clear in this video about it. If you know what he's talking about, let me know better my mental health I is it the sugar thing because i saw in his last video i don't know if it was the last video but the last video that i watched he said he was going to get juices and just like eat sugar and no fat so is that what he's going to do for 30 days just eat sugar get how much of this eating disorder i can get rid of and everything like that no now, <laughs> no i don't think there is a such thing as how much of this eating disorder i need to get rid of you need to see a professional and not try to bit by bit pack away at the eating disorder on your own i think you need somebody to help you uh, with a plan, with some therapy, and with, you know, everything that you need. Not, let's see how much of this eating disorder I can get rid of. Because, are, does this mean you're going to eat a balanced diet for 30, 30 days? No. You're doing another diet for 30 days. So, how, you're not really working on your eating disorder. I'm not going to add a bunch of foods. I'm going to keep it really simple. Uh, for this month, it's, it's mostly going to be rice. I got some potatoes left. Yeah, yeah you're on your ED. So how are you going to fix your ED? And whittle away at your ED when you pretty much just now doing your ED again. I got, um, I got some of them candies. I have. <sighs> oh, this video is so long. I'm sorry, but this is so crazy. You got rice and some of them candies. I know people, they, they don't believe in doctors. Oh, doctors, you know. Doctors are so bad, but I think if you showed a bunch of a room full of doctors and knew about diabetes and maybe they work with diabetic patients and saw this man talking about how he had this high glucose in the morning and he's got rice and candy and he's going to keep it simple, they would be floored. Like, wow, wow, you think the pharmaceutical industry is so bad? These doctors will tell you to stop doing this, you know, before you need the insulin. I haven't been buying much fruit because I had a really bad fruit fly issue earlier this year. And what else do I have? I just got, you know, some of the tomatoes and everything that I got from my father. What else do I got? I mean, it's just real simple stuff. Just simple stuff because I don't really like making complicated things, even though I like taking pictures of complicated things. But we'll see what happens. I don't know. If somebody said uh, jokingly that, are you going to make a cookbook? But no, I mean, I just uh, the, lately, the only thing I've been making is soda bread and rice and stuff like that like but i think i might even cut out the soda bread because i want to see if i cut out the bread and i cut out the beans if my sh blood sugar goes even further down because I, there is fat in beans especially the chickpeas that i had <sighs> okay um see so i'm really getting tired y'all <laughs> sorry it's like it's just like those people have got you so messed up that you're afraid to eat chickpeas for your blood sugar, but you want to eat plain white rice. It's just so absurd. It's so ridiculous. And it's very sad. I'm pretty sure Daring Rider has gotten a lot of people to be on insulin. They just kind of disappeared and faded out and, you know, taking their medicine now. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I do. But. I've actually felt a lot better. I'll probably be able to see on camera if I look any different. I haven't weighed myself. I completely forgot to do that. I probably should have done that at the beginning of it, but I kind of want to take videos like this. I, I, it's easier just to see it than to weigh yourself. Cause even Pritikin used to talk about like, you would look different, but you would weigh the same or maybe even more because if you're doing like exercise and stuff like that, you might have more muscle mass. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I think that's the video. I mean, I don't really know what else to talk about. It's, it was, I was shocked actually when I woke up and I, I saw like almost pre-diabetic numbers because all I had last night was potatoes, rice, um, peppers. I'll put a picture of it. Peppers. Look, I know there's some people that say they like the long videos, but I feel like this one is getting too damn long. So I'm going to speed them up a little bit. And I guess that's his meal. It looks like... It looks like if I ate this, I would definitely be craving gummies or some candy or something because this is not going to keep you full and stable for very long. Corn. But I did make my own hummus, just a little bit of it, uh, out of chickpeas because that way I didn't add any oil or fat or anything like that. I know what was in it. It was just chickpeas, 
uh, roasted pepper, uh, a little bit of salt, and some cumin, I think that's all it was. And it came out really good. So anyways, I think that's about it. Any comments, questions down below? But yeah, it's, it's amazing to, uh, now that I have numbers behind this, and like I said, I'm not gonna do this every day because I really don't feel like pricking myself. And I, I'm one of these paranoid people, like I'm like, what are they actually putting in these needles? Because you know, they can lace these things. <sighs> this is your diet making you do this. <laughs> your, is your diet making you feel this way paranoia is part of being a vegan paranoia is like the foundation of being a vegan <laughs> the foundation of veganism is paranoia no matter which way you want to look at it whether it's the animals whether it's the environment whether it's your health you gotta have some type of paranoia to go into it and then when you go vegan you become even more paranoid like where are you buying these needles from i don't know maybe he bought maybe he got a glucose monitor kit off craigslist or something with the k with the needles <laughs> I'm trying to understand, like, why are you afraid of the needles? Like, what could they possibly put on the needle? Huh? A substance, like like a chemical compound, like a drug? Why would they drug you up for free for no reason? There's some trace amount that's not even visible on the end of a needle. A disease? A disease and pathogen is not just going to live on a needle forever, first of all. And you can clean your needles. Um, they should be fresh new needles, right? And if this disease is on it, you should be able to go and get it tested and you should have a lawsuit if that's the case. You better spray your needles with some alcohol. Or <laughs> Why do you think there's stuff with the needles? Okay, maybe I shouldn't laugh. Maybe he did buy a secondhand glucose kit that came with needles that he don't know the sources of them. I can't listen to any more of this video. I feel like he basically said everything he needed to say, but I want to go down to the... All right, the comments. And I did see a disagreement in the comments about the sugar thing in the morning. So remove your body after the meal for 10 to 15 minutes is a must. They'll help your body absorb all that glucose into the muscles. Okay, 10 minute walks after each meal. Best digestion ever was a summer job where I had to walk 15 minutes. Look, whatever you got to do to make your body work. I don't, <laughs> I sometimes eat going to sleep right now. So, um, and I don't have any blood sugar issues. But, you know, if you got to do that, then you got to do that. You know, figure out what works for you. I've had similar phenomenon, but my blood sugar was higher in the middle of the night around 130 to 140. Apparently it's something called the dawn phenomenon. And it's pretty normal for blood sugar to raise at night, early morning. It can occur in both diabetics and non-diabetics yeah the dawn phenomenon the body raises glucose to get you up in the morning for me uh i feel like my glucose goes down a little bit in the morning that's what gets me up in the morning because i the food like that's <laughs> the main thing that makes me get out of the bed is like i'm hungry uh when i first wake up i'm very hungry when i wake up i don't think i get like low glucose i don't think it's gonna because my fasting glucose uh, i think it's like in the 80s that's not too low but for me that's low enough to make me want to eat raise cortisol i don't know what he means the dawn phenomenon is real, but 133 upon waking up at a realistic hour isn't okay. Depends on what you define as a realistic hour. Mine's only that high at like 2 to 4 a.m., especially if I had a higher carb meal for dinner. I mean, you got to take into context the people that's over here. These are like probably high carb people, and they think it's normal to have your blood sugar spiking in the middle of the night. Mm. Yet if I check around 6 or 8, it's below 110. Everyone's different. Okay. Where did you read Dawn Phenomenon being normal for non-diabetics? Every source says this only happens in pre-full diabetes. Your hormones increase sugar to get you up. I don't be feeling like that in the morning. Is that bad? I'll be hungry in the morning. And I shouldn't say that just because I'm hungry means my blood sugar is low. But when I first open my eyes in the morning, like I want some, some yogurt or some applesauce or something. Like I just open my eyes and I immediately feel like I need, <laughs> so I need feel like my blood sugar is not low, but like I just want sugar. That's the anything that makes me want to get out of the bed is to eat some food and it's going to be the first thing i always eat every single day when i open my eyes and get out of the bed it's going to be something that tastes sweet and it's not going to be um candies and stuff but it's going to be you know something with sugar in it your hormones increase sugar to get you up but likely any meal if you're healthy insulin should keep you under 100 i don't know i don't know if i have insulin or not insulin glucose under 100 after eating also is normal for your blood glucose to go up to 140 post prandial I don't know what that means. It will gradually go down. You need to worry when there's huge spikes and swings in glucose. I, I don't know. I don't think I would like to see blood sugar of 140 in any context. I don't know. I just wouldn't like to see that. Normal lancing devices hurt and leave scars. Try What? Take a test 20 minutes after you eat. See how high it spikes. That's probably too soon. Checking it one hour and then two hours would catch a, a bad trend. Years ago when I ate a lot of stuff I shouldn't have eaten my blood sugar issues I kept going higher even four hours later rice beans pork belly 
two empanadas. Two hours my glucose that showed was 98. Uh, well, that sounds like there's fat in it, though. And protein. Your belly looks thinner. I don't know. I, I don't really... I didn't... I don't remember what he looked like in the other videos. Bro, there's really only two options. If you don't want to hear this... I know you don't want to hear this, but either you count calories or you eat only low-calorie foods. Those are the only options. Calorie deficit is required. Your body stores excess energy. It's normal, not broken. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that either because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional. Uh, for some people, just saying, oh, you see the calorie deficit. This man in this video, Ryan or whatever, it seems like for this person has an extreme mindset. They can only do things in the extreme. For him, I don't know what his base calories are, but if it's like 2,500, I don't know. He's like, isn't he like six feet tall or something? Maybe it's like 3,000. I don't know. What, I have no idea what his uh, maintenance calories would be, but let's say it's like 3,000. He wouldn't be able to, that 3,000 sounds really high. Let's say it's like, maybe it sounds high to me, but let's just say it's 3,000, okay? I could be completely wrong, but I'm just using these numbers for it just you know, for example sake, if his maintenance calories for his height is and weight is like 3,000, eating a calorie deficit, I mean, they didn't say calorie deficit. Yeah, they said a calorie deficit is required. He wouldn't be able to say, okay, I have my maintenance is 3,000. Let me do 2,500 for six months or something. He, he seems like the type that would just go down to like 500 calories and, and be starving all the time. Like he needs help. This person needs help. Okay, he wouldn't need 2,500 calories of like a, a balanced diet of three meals a day. He would probably eat 500 calories and eat a bowl of white rice and five candies and a sugar drink and try to survive like that until he's starving to death and then got to go and eat 5 million calories because he's starving to death. You know? Did you change his channel name again? Probably. Protein is not used by the body for energy in order for, in order for the body to be used as energy. Okay, you're already contradicting what you said. <laughs> Do a blood work, fasted insulin, HbA, A1c. Yeah, I think so far this is the best comment. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Even though I ain't read the whole thing yet. He needs a full blood panel from a doctor. It's not just your glucose and seeing all the weird numbers. You need to get an HbA1c, triglyceride, insulin. You need to get a more extensive uh, blood test done. If they're high, you have insulin resistance. Best way to improve insulin resistance is move your body more. Now, if they say something about eating high carb, I'm going to give it a un un thumbs up. <laughs> Lower fat, which your fat intake is low. Oh, they borderline getting it. I'm going to take this th thumbs up back. But I agree with getting a more um, extensive test. But also you can have micronutrient deficiency from eating a lot of refined sugar. Yes, when you eat nothing but sugar, you talk about eating just rice and candies, you are going to blow through your B vitamins because you need to burn up B vitamins in order for you to even process all this sugar. And a lot of these people, they're not recommending eating brown rice even sometimes or eating people like freely eating all the sugar and they are against nutritional yeast for some reason. And they're just against foods that replenish your B vitamins to help you even process these sugars. You know, they think you just eat sugar, it goes into your body, insulin, the end. They forget all the other things that goes into it, all the things that get depleted by the sugar. And it's fine if the sugar comes with foods that have vitamins to replenish those. But then they don't want to eat any protein either. And your body, how is your body going to even make insulin? They think insulin just comes out of thin air. I think your body needs amino acids to even make everything, even your insulin. Anyway, you can eat as much whole foods, brown rice, and other grains, legumes, potatoes, veggies, fruits, and you'll be okay. You also need some meat too, I think, <laughs> or at least some eggs. Um, but if you start to eat a lot of refined sugar, you will deplete your B vitamin minerals like zinc, chromium, selenium, potassium. I'm going to get us a thumbs up again just because I think that the points that this person is making is very important for glucose metabolism is important. B vitamins, yes, yes, yes. Please don't forget all the things that goes into your body metabolizing sugar and glucose because the Dorian Riders and the Freelies and the Nutrition by Victoria's of the world, all they think about is sugar, insulin, glucose. The end. They don't know anything about the vitamins. That's why you got Freely over there talking about you need like 50 times the amount of vitamin C that you need, really need. She has a whole video about how you should get all this vitamin C and all this vitamin C, right? When even Dr. Greger has a video about how limited your body's capacity to absorb vitamin C is the only reason you should need more and more and more and more vitamin C is because the vitamin C actually competes with the sugar to get absorbed. The vitamin C and the sugar has the same receptor on your cell, right? But your body will ignore the vitamin C for sugar because your body got to get the sugar out of your bloodstream. It ain't really worried about the vitamin C. It might be like, we'll get it some later. Um, the sugar is a priority. So if you eat a whole bunch of sugar, you can actually wind up wasting a lot of vitamin C.
That's why she needs 15 times the amount of regular vitamin C because she got too much Sam sugar in her diet. So there's a lot of other things that goes into her body being able to function. You know, but this man, he was saying things like, oh, your body just heals. Your body can just heal. Your body doesn't need food to heal. Your body is probably so depleted. He needs to get that insulin. He needs to get that HbA1c. He needs to get triglycerides. And I would suggest even before he starts taking multivitamins, you should go and get a full B vitamin panel, zinc, chromium, selenium, potassium, get a, a panel of everything before you even take the vitamins so that you can truly see what Dorian Ryder's diet has done to you. Because you can start taking the vitamins and just like, oh, and start to feel maybe a little bit better and not really realize what Dorian Ryder is recommending. It's a complete malnutrition destruction diet. You might think, oh, Dorian Ryder seems fine. Dorian Ryder be over there looking like his skin looks like it's uh, really, really depleted of all collagen. Sometimes he'd be over there talking and sounding like he's not making any sense. It's like his brain is slowing down. He's getting really repetitive. I mean, he's always been repetitive. But you don't know the state of Dorian Ryder. You don't know what his blood glucose is. You don't know what his um his micronutrient panel is. And you also don't know what he's eating behind closed doors. You Let's face it, you don't live with any of these people 24-7. You don't know what they're doing. Dorian Ryder and Natasha, both of them, they've been skinny even when they were back eating KFC and meat and stuff. So you don't know what they're doing. Okay? Best way to get blood sugar down is to go raw. F off dude 133 is diabetic you should be under 100 when fasting preferably in the low 80s check your fasting sugar every day for a while see if this was a one-time freak out or if there's a definite problem it'll be good to, uh, to check their sugar two hours after eating too could you get a cgm instead yes he needs that slightly less accurate than pricking test but you can then forget about it and you can get all the readings you want monitor in real time okay yeah it might be less accurate but it seems simpler. Maybe you can get one from a doctor. Maybe the doctor will send you home with one. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm in the video now. I feel bad for this man. You need to get you need to get into a doctor and get everything tested in your whole body. Okay. Because if your B vitamins are depleted, did you know your body just doesn't just need insulin? Did you know the insulin doesn't come out of thin air? You know your pancreas and all your organs need things to sustain them. Anyway, that's all I got to say. I feel bad for this man. I don't think he's going to listen to anyone. I think he's just going to keep starting over and keep starting over and figuring out you know you cut out all the fat out of your diet the dinner that he showed had like no fat in it in my opinion but now you're gonna cut out the chickpeas now you're just gonna eat rice and candies like there may also be some some mental psychological things going on here as well that just this is a grown person a grown seemingly independent person nobody can get through to anybody that's a grown independent person people are allowed to go and destroy themselves you know that's their free will to do that so he's gonna go on the rice and candy and um keep checking his sugar with a prick test and yeah anyway that's all i gotta say